Welcome to yet another tutorial on Excel functions. We will be covering VLOOKUP function in this video. Before I explain VLOOKUP, let us look at this example. There is a data table consisting of ship name, name of the ship captain, and contact number of that captain. Now say, just for the sake of the example, ship name Seabird arrives at the dock. And the dock administrating authority would like to contact the captain of that ship. So they need to look at this table and first, they locate ship name Seabird, and then find contact information from that row. Here, even manually, one can locate Seabird information very quickly, because sample data table is very small. Imagine, there are thousands of row of such data. And in that, if we need to locate Titanic and its relevant information, it may take time. And here is where, VLOOKUP comes in picture. VLOOKUP can give all required detail instantly. Let us see. We are using VLOOKUP to get the contact number of the concern ship. We have used VLOOKUP formula in C4 cell to get the required ship detail. Let me type the ship name Seabird in the cell before as input. And here we go. And we got required information. Let us just confirm from the table. Let us check for some other ship name, say Titanic. And we get the correct result. This is only one use out of many uses of VLOOKUP function. So, once you have seen basic use of VLOOKUP, now let me explain how to use VLOOKUP function. That is, syntax of VLOOKUP function. VLOOKUP require at least three arguments. That is, we will need to provide at least three information to VLOOKUP to work. These three pieces of information are the value you want to look up, the range where the lookup value is located, and the column number in the range that contains the return value. For example, if you specify B5, colon D21 as the range, you should count B as the first column, C as the second, and so on. Please note that there is also fourth parameter. But as it is optional we would not cover at start level. Here is syntax of VLOOKUP. Seems complex and confusing right? Don't worry it becomes simple once we use in different examples. Let me put it in simple way. You need to ask three questions to yourself while using VLOOKUP. What you want to look up. Which table contain its answer. And last question, which column number of that table contain answer? Say let us find contact number of the captain of Titanic ship. Start typing formula in C13 cell. Equal to VLOOKUP. First argument that we need to pass to VLOOKUP is what to look for. Clicking on ship name that is on the cell B13. You can see that cell address B13 is passed to VLOOKUP as first argument, comma, second argument, which table contains its answer. Drag the mouse over the table. We can see that table range address has come as second parameter, followed by comma, and third argument, which column does contain answer, that is column number. And as we can see, third column contain contact number. So typing 3 as third parameter to VLOOKUP, close the bracket and press enter. And we got the answer. Let me repeat it quickly so that no doubts remain in your mind. Equal to VLOOKUP. What to look for. Clicking on B13. Coma. Dragging the mouse over the table. Coma. As third column contain contact number, typing 3, close bracket, and press enter. And we got the answer. Let us see other common usage of VLOOKUP. Most common use of VLOOKUP is to use it in place of nested if. If you have seen my earlier video on Excel if function, then you must be aware of the fact that when there are more than one condition, we need to use multiple time if function in single formula. And those who have used nested if must be aware of the fact that it is not as simple as it sounds. Let us have a look at this example. 
we need to assign grade depending on the subject score. This is normally achieved by nested if and the formula is like this. As I said earlier, not as simple as one might think. But fortunately, VLOOKUP can easily replace nested if. VLOOKUP makes the same work damn simple. Let us see how to use VLOOKUP instead of nested if and achieve the same result. A simple rule table is already prepared at one side of the sheet. Let us start typing the VLOOKUP function in the required cell. Equal to VLOOKUP bracket select the cell of total marks student secured. Comma. Select the rule table by dragging mouse over it. Comma. Third and last parameter. Column number which contain the answer. So type 2. Close the bracket and hit the enter. We got the correct expected answer. We can drag down the result cell to get answer for all students in a second. But here you will find some unexpected result. Let me drag down. Ah, we got all answer instantly, except one. Now logically, if first two three answer are correct, then how could be it possible that only one answer is showing problem? You can pause video and give a thought. What could have gone wrong? To find the inside story, we need to click on the function bar. When we click, Excel will show all cells that are involved in that formula. We can see that everything is okay. Now let us see the same thing for the cell having problem in result. For that first come out of the existing formula by pressing escape button, and then click on the cell which is having problem. So let me click on that cell, then on the function bar. And observe whether everything is as per our expectation. Oh! Surprisingly, table selection is completely wrong. But wait, we did not select that table manually for this cell. So it cannot be our mistake. So how come this table selection changed automatically? And you may get answer from within that, when we are dragging down the resultant cell to get answer in all other rows, Excel will make all cell selection within the formula, relative to that. That is, for every next draw, Excel will make shift of all selected cell address. And because of that the whole table is shifted down to that extent, and due to that your required data are missed out. So, how to fix this? We will need to tell our function that hey, don't use relative address for this table. Make it absolute and fix. To do that, we will need to just press F4 after selecting that table. And that will make table address absolute in that formula. Let us do that. Doing it from scratch is equal to VLOOKUP bracket, click on the total marks, comma, drag the rule table and press F4. You can see when you pressed F4, cell address in the formula changes dollar sign gets added before raw and column addresses. This dollar sign before addresses makes that address absolute. Rest is same. Comma. 2. Press enter. Let us drag down to get answer for all other rows. And now we got all correct. We can even further check the inside story by clicking on the formula bar. We can see that for all different rows, our table range remains the same and fixed. So remember that. We must press F4 after selecting table cells as second argument. This is way VLOOKUP is used for. Now we will be using optional fourth parameter that can be passed in VLOOKUP function. Let us consider following simple example. Suppose, we need to get salary of every employee, depending on their designation, or you can say, their position. For that, we have data table and rule table. Looks to be very simple. Right? Let us do quickly. Is equal to V lookup, opening bracket, selecting designation cell, comma, drag on our lookup table, and press F4, comma, 2, as required output is in second column of lookup table. Close bracket and hit enter. We got the expected answer. Drag down to get answer for all rows. And to our surprise, while checking, you can see that result for project manager has come wrong. Everything seems to be okay. We have also used absolute reference to lookup table by pressing F4. Then why are we getting wrong result? That also only for project manager. 
The reason is that by default, VLOOKUP just check for approximate match. And for project manager, it just check for say first character P of project manager. Now what happens is while searching, once S has come, VLOOKUP assumes that now P won't come. As alphabetically, P is before S. So it gave us answer of the row above, S. So the solution to this problem is, we need to tell VLOOKUP that, hey, don't just do approximate match, do exact match. We can tell this to VLOOKUP by passing 0 as fourth optional parameter. Let us do that. Yes. Now we got the correct result. So if we want exact match from lookup table, use fourth parameter or else can leave it as we did not use it in our previous 2v lookup examples. You need to see all these three different examples to understand vlookup properly. Now it's your turn to do practice. For corporate as well as for individual training needs, feel free to contact me at cksaw at yahoo.com. If you found this video useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And for more of these videos don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you can get updates when new videos come out.